Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist. Prior to that, I was a research engineer in telecommunications and received several patents. Tonight, I want to speak about Paul Krugman coming out in support of Hillary Clinton's health care plan. <clears throat> so, essentially, what Paul Krugman and Hillary Clinton are saying is, no, we can't, uh, which I find uh, quite astonishing. <clears throat> uh, the reason that voters are interested in Bernie Sanders uh, is because with Barack Obama, they do feel they got somewhat burned. Barack Obama staged a big campaign with uh, Yes, We Can, Change We Can Believe In, and we got very incremental, modest uh, change. Uh, we didn't see any bankers jailed. And the thing I find interesting about Obama is that at various points in the Sanders campaign, when he came out strongly on things like paid family leave and minimum wage, uh, 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 Obama moved. Obama told us we have to rise up and advocate for him to be able to move on big issues. Uh, he said that at the time. He, uh, there was a, a quote where he said to somebody, I can't hear you, meaning there needs to be a lot of public pressure for him to be able to, to move. So we don't know all of the details about uh, why Obama has continued a large uh, military industrial complex, why he has uh, continued a drone program where 82% of the people in Pakistan hate us. Uh, you might wonder why. You might know that Pakistan was a principal drone field. I'm pretty sure a lot of people in Yemen are going to have a fairly poor opinion about us uh, uh, giving logistics for the Saudi invasion. But at any rate, uh, Krugman is saying, no, we can't. And this is a dis disingenuous argument, uh, and I'm going to explain why briefly. Uh, so first of all, Krugman states that we need an incremental approach because there's too much popular resistance in uh, Washington. There's too much political power amassed against us. Now, obviously, we're not getting single payer if we don't get single payer. So if Sanders was elected, we would use incremental approaches uh, uh, until we could get to a single payer point. And single payer isn't uh, a requirement. It's the only proven way to control health care costs. Our health care costs will probably go down about 50%. Now, some people just uh, complain about mass unemployment in the insurance industry, private insurance industry, and that's a legitimate concern. But if you, can, uh, if you look at the economy as a set of potential workers and you're able to free workers up, those workers can actually produce real wealth. Right now, people in the private insurance business are 75% not producing real wealth. What could they do? They could be artists. They could be teachers. They could be researchers. Uh, there are many ways we can create real wealth. They could build better shopping malls made out of tile and masonry instead of uh, particle board. There's, uh, they could build monorail systems. Uh, we could go to the moon. Um, so we don't need to keep people in non-productive occupations. Um, so I hope I dispense with that argument. Now, I looked this up before. I've had uh, debates with people, and uh, this public option has no proven effect on health care costs. The only proven system for controlling health care costs and getting it down from nearly 20 percent of our economy to more like 8 percent of our economy, maybe 10 at the most, which would be my target, uh, is uh, through a single-payer system. Because at one time, I uh, was advocating public option. And then I did the research. And if you do the research, you'll find there's no proof that single, uh, that public option will control costs. <clears throat> so then there's this issue about the political feasibility, um, which is disingenuous, because obviously if something isn't politically feasible, it can't be done. Uh, and there's nothing about Clinton's approach of technocratic. As somebody called back in the Bill Clinton days in an article I read, he, they called Clinton's presidency mind-numbing incrementalism. So it's pretty funny that uh, this is exactly what uh, Clinton is now claiming is her main strength, is that she's uh, doing incrementalism. I'm quite certain that uh, Sanders will be capable of doing incrementalism as well, as he cited in the case of his working with McCain on veterans' health care. <clears throat> uh, so political feasibility is really disingenuous. Uh, Sanders has also said this is a vision. 
So the vision, as he has said, will require mass popular support. We'll need to change who our uh, legislators are. That They will need to look out their window in Washington and see mass protests or rallies. We're not going to get things that we're not willing to work for. Ironically, in this case, the public sector. Um, so this is what I call the past to cost effective health care. And this really leads me to wonder just who is Paul Krugman and uh, uh, what does he believe in? And uh, Krugman attacked Obama previously. So uh, I think getting a Nobel Prize isn't the only requirement to having real guts and vision. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of Keynesianism. Uh, I've studied uh, Austrian economics as well, which has a certain attraction to me because uh, it doesn't deal with just treat money, which is really people's energy, just as fluid dynamics of a giant plumbing system that we can do whatever we want with. I don't see that Krugman differentiates between real productive work and non-productive work. He sees work as whatever is required to generate tickets, tickets being money, to the uh, workers to be able to access the means of production. Uh, to be, uh, and, and we should go beyond thinking about issuing tickets so that we can get uh, access to resources. Um, and my own studies indicate that we would only need about 25% of our uh, uh, population to provide all the basic services that we need, and that the other 75% who are employed in finance, insurance, real estate, uh, there's nothing wrong with somebody being a financial wizard, an insurance guru, or a real estate, but it, I think these people will need to go into other areas. And and I hope that we can have a vision that in two or three hundred years, perhaps after we're gone, we can have a real paradise here on Earth and not uh, a hell. Um, and this uh, technology and human uh, innovation should be able to create a paradise for us. So the, uh, there's a problem with Keynesianism in creating a paradise because you need to figure out how to reduce the number of workers that are doing our basic services for us and then figure out how we can do things that are interesting uh, uh, and also spend time with each other, interact with each other, not be glued to our cell phones all the time. <clears throat> And uh, so the Paul Krugman and Hillary Clinton No We Can't uh, party uh, also brings me to, uh, you know, the subject of why I, I don't support Hillary Clinton in particular, which was uh, the way she handled Libya, uh, where the previous government there was begging to have elections under Gaddafi. They knew their days were numbered. They had already voluntarily given up their weapons of mass destruction and to Bush in 2003, stopped their nuclear program. Basically, uh, threw their lot in with the West, thought they had been protected by the West, and this sends a dangerous signal to other countries such as North Korea of what happens if you give up your weapons of mass destruction. So bad precedent. Second, betrayal. America can't be trusted. Uh, third, uh, especially Russia, India, China, countries like this, uh, deeply distrust the U.S. now of uh, Security Council resolutions because what she asked for was a no-fly zone, and she used it to destroy their military. She knew, as we're finding out now through the emails with Blumenthal, she knew that the uh, opposition, as she uh, envisioned it, was being infiltrated by al-Qaeda, um, and she wants to have a no-fly zone again in Syria, which is telling that she wanted to reproduce the disaster she created in, in Libya, which spread hell all over Africa, uh, caused tens of thousands of refugees to die, created a, a prison population of Gaddafi supporters that were tortured and murdered in concentration camps run by warlords. Uh, the Roman ruins in Libya are likely to be desecrated and dynamited by ISIS. Um, just as has happened in uh, Syria. So that's all I need. I, I do personally like Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, but um, uh, her policies are, are odious uh, in some respects, especially foreign policy. And it's deeply disgusting to me that people would say this is her strong suit. Uh, her, it's her strong suit if we want to be hated and we want to have a world that's in constant edge and constant warfare, or a world dominated by multinational corporations where no country can develop their own systems. The system can only be global super capitalism. And if you resist it, you will be destabilized and invaded. So that Goldman Sachs 
and the thousands of other invasion capitalism countries can parcel out and sell your country. And I found her behavior in the debate last night uh, really disgusting. It was disgusting because she was saying things that what, she wasn't describing her vision. Uh, she was saying that uh, Sanders attacked and disliked Obama to a largely black audience, essentially playing a race card. Uh, uh, whereas, in fact, uh, I don't think there's any really strong case to say that uh, Clinton has a closer relationship with Obama uh, than uh, Sanders does, and that I, certainly there's no evidence that uh, Clinton uh, cares more about poor and working people and minorities than, than Bernie Sanders does. So I thought it was not fair what she said. Uh, picking one interview where he said we'd all been disappointed in some respects by Obama's accomplishments in 2011 on a radio show, uh, doing her opposition research and attacking him with it. Uh, is It's not the way I would run a campaign to try to destroy people based on f lies. But she did it to Gaddafi in Libya. She destroyed that country based on lies. Uh, uh, she, and uh, so she seems quite comfortable with it. And, uh, you know, I was warming to her, although I would never for a moment deviated from my uh, support of Sanders in this election. Uh, but I felt sort of guilty uh, saying bad things about her. Uh, we have some family friends that uh, know the Clintons, so it feels doubly bad. Um, uh, but I thought it was nasty what she did to him there and uh, he's championing uh, as he said to her that she knew better she knew that she was using Republican talking points against him so I didn't see that she used truth at all in the debate to say here's my view and uh, here's your view and this is why my approach is better um, she used uh, weapons uh, to destroy the man uh, and it's, uh, you know, you're never allowed to do, quote Hitler without losing, but Hitler said, destroying a man is right. And um, <clears throat> so I was really disappointed <clears throat> with her in the debate because I thought she fought dirty. And I thought Sanders was by and large a gentleman. I'm not saying all of her criticisms of him were unjust, but uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, disappointing. I'm very disappointed Paul Krugman and uh, you know, I've liked Joseph Stiglitz a lot more than Krugman for a long time, and now uh, I see Krugman as just part of the establishment, an apparatchik, and a technocrat. Uh, and uh, simply being a uh, Clinton partisan, uh, which maintains the status quo of a country with a, uh, of a weak and uneducated middle class and working class and poor class with a enormous incarceration. All the problems Sanders are talking about is talking about are spot on. They're exactly what we need to solve. People like Rand Paul and Ron Paul speak of them as well. They have different approaches, but they're willing to speak truth to power. Um, so it is a, a funny thing. We've come to the point where we have the establishment simply saying, no, we can't. Uh, and uh, in the what, why do we believe Bernie Sanders and, and, uh, and believe that this is change we can believe in? I said back in 2012 that in the case of Ron Paul, this is change we can verify because uh, the commonality of Ron Paul and Bernie Sanders is that they are clearly not in it for the money. They're not in it to get off on power. Uh, they are uh, deeply uh, philosophically based people. Um, and um, uh, the 30 year record Sanders has makes people feel confident that he won't do what Obama did, which was to talk one game up to 2008, up to get the election, and then act in quite a different way once he got in power. And, and as I said, my only excuse for him is that he said, I can't hear you, but he didn't take his database of people like me who contributed to him and call us up or email us and say, this is what we're going to do next. Everything ended when he got into office. Bernie was charitable about it and said that Obama was going to negotiate. Uh, but to us, we felt uh, used and sold out. <clears throat> uh, just as when I sent a lot of money to uh, Ron Paul, two weeks later, he dropped out of the election, perhaps because they promised him a good treatment of his son. I don't know. Uh, that's the rumor I heard. And this Jesse Benton was a real 
uh, uh, snake in the house. So at any rate, sort of all over the map tonight, uh, but I hope that I convince some of you that uh, Krugman should uh, be discounted uh, because this uh, his argument, if we go through it in the New York Times, uh, I think can be refuted at every point. Um, he simply says we don't have the capability to do it. Uh, and uh, I don't see anything in here that really uh, indicates that uh, there's anything wrong with uh, Sanders' uh, approach it's other than its lack of political feasibility. Now, if we elect, uh, if we get uh, coattails for Sanders, we won't have this problem. Sanders has stated it's a vision. It may not happen overnight. Uh, so it was simply a way for Krugman to weigh in, put a thumb on the scale, to advance Clinton's agenda, and it was disingenuous. It was a fraud, and I'm angry about it uh, because I've respected Paul Krugman in the past. In fact, one of my more popular videos was simply reading his speech, uh, Blizzard of Lies, about McCain. My name is Alexander Hagen. Thank you, good night, and good luck.